Before we get to the video, I wanted to let you guys know we're having a huge clearance sale on the website. Discounts over 50% off on everything you can think of. Hats, shirts, drinkware, you name it. So click the link in the description and head over there and check it out. They say no one man should have too much power because let's face it, as soon as somebody becomes the undisputed king of something, they're gonna wanna use those powers for evil. Or maybe that's just me. But even I'm nothing compared to the kings you're gonna see on this list. So hey, I'm Nervous Nick for Screw Attack's Top 10 Ruthless Kings. Number 10. When you think of Mario, you don't really think of one plumber's endless war with an army of monsters. But the fact is, the Mushroom Kingdom has never known a king more ruthless than Bowser and his Koopa army. He wages war on the Mushroom Kingdom to pursue the princess for reasons, lives in a volcanic castle, commands an army of monstrous mushrooms and turtles, and has his own fleet of airships. He even transformed the good people of the Mushroom Kingdom into blocks. Blocks which two so-called heroes smash to bits just to eat mushrooms or whatever. Gotta say, that's pretty evil. Number 9 You know that somewhere in the Marvel mythos there's got to be at least one ruthless king. Prime example, ruler of the astral plane, Amal Farouk. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but you can just call him the Shadow King. Not much is known about the Shadow King's origins, but we do know that this king may be one of the most powerful telepaths in all of existence. In fact, Professor X first started the X-Men team because of an encounter with him. But having existed for thousands of years, the king has learned how to be patient. So whenever a door opens between our worlds, he's always ready to take over a new mutant host like Storm or Legion to use their powers to enslave humanity. Also, he makes people fat. Makes you fat? Number 8 The one simply known as The King has been the long-standing ruler of the fast food giant Burger King. And thanks to some choice propaganda, he became an overnight sensation in the early 2000s. But BK's reigning monarch is no friend of ours, oppressing the nation for decades with his mac and Cheetos and burger-scented cologne. He can find you in your workplace, in your home, on the very bed you sleep in. Wherever you may be, the king delivers salty sweets which only serve to make us hungrier. Sure, you can get chicken nuggets for $1.50, but is it really made of chicken? Is it? And how can you reconcile the unholy union of burgers and Tex-Mex with the tragic Whopperito? You can't! The CFO of Burger King claimed that the plastic-faced monarch scared away women and children from their local restaurants. If there is a positive spin to that story, it's that at least the king ended up being dethroned. Number 7 You ever seen Wreck-It Ralph? You already know where I'm going with this. King Candy wasn't born into royalty like most kings. Instead, he actually took over his kingdom by basically hacking the game that he lives in so that he's the ruler and nobody remembers the actual monarch. Spoilers, it's Sarah Silverman. But like any king worthy of being called ruthless, one kingdom wasn't enough for King Candy, so he set his sights on conquering all of the games in the entire arcade. You could say it was sort of a dictator move. Hey, shut up, that pun was quality. You telling me people don't look at Kanye West like the glitch? Number six. They say that myths are often built on truths, even myths like Bram Stoker's Dracula. The famous vampire we all know is actually based on our number six king, Vlad Dracul III. If that name doesn't sound familiar, maybe you'll recognize him better as Vlad the Impaler. And yeah, that's a name he earned for the exact reason you'd think. He once impaled two monks and then their donkey for good measure. Why the donkey, you ask? Because he was technically a witness to the other two murders. Another story says that Vlad yoked his prisoners into the lid of a massive cauldron and boiled them to death. Yeah, I suppose that would explain why he's been described as a demented psychopath, a sadist, a gruesome murderer, and a masochist. Even if Bram Stoker didn't explicitly say that Vlad was a vampire, it's pretty clear that he was the perfect basis for the King of Darkness. Number 5 There should be no surprise that a land as storied and ancient as World of Warcraft's Azeroth has hosted a king worthy of being on this list. The dreaded Lich King atop Ice Crown Glacier may have formed an army of the undead to cripple Azeroth, but it wasn't until he merged with Arthas Menethil that the true Lord of Terror emerged. 
With his blade Frostmorn in hand, Arthas infected the citizens of Azeroth with a ghoulish plague, brought the Scourge to the gates of Orgrimmar and Stormwind, and rallied a new order of Death Knights, powerful necromancers to terrorize the land with. Too bad he ended up face to face with an adventurer like you and ended up dying in Ghost Daddy's arms. Which made him even more powerful, so good job. Number four. I got three words for you. Lelouch v. Britannia, the 99th emperor of the Holy Britannian Empire. Or, you know, maybe 11 words if you count the full title, but let me tell you, when you've got a magic eyeball that lets you brainwash anybody into obeying one specific command, you've got a lot of ruthless king potential. For Lelouch from Code Geass, this means the occasional small crime, like hijacking a giant mech, but other times his sins are too big to ignore. I'm talking about forcing his half-sister to commit genocide on the Japanese people which led to her execution, and then making that same sister's personal bodyguard drop a nuke on Tokyo to kill 25 million more people. And true, both times were kind of an accident, but he sort of just rolled with it to push his own agenda. Kind of makes you ask that age-old anime protagonist question, is it all worth it? Number 3 there is no way you can look at Malekith from Warhammer and tell me that he's anything but a ruthless king. He looks like one of the cone heads, but with antlers and evil glowy eyes. Nobody good has evil glowy eyes. But Malekith the Witch King is more than just a scary looking man made of spikes. The dude started a decades long civil war, as an evil king does, and then sacrificed a whole bunch of people to open a portal to the demon world. But he didn't stop there. After that, Malekith went ahead and kidnapped and enslaved humans and high elves across the land to build his kingdom and feed his warriors. Also, just look at his castle. Do you really think a nice king lives there? No. No, he doesn't. Number two. Now, some kings dream of global conquest, but for most, it never becomes reality. But King Piccolo did it twice. Centuries before the events of Dragon Ball, the tyrant used his mighty powers to terrorize the entire Earth. The world was brought to its knees until a couple of dudes trapped him in an electric rice cooker. Eventually, the mean green king was released, ultimately leading to his second reign as conqueror of Earth. Seeing beloved characters like Tien beaten within an inch of death or Krillin, you know, actually dying, raised the stakes higher than anything else seen in Dragon Ball until that point. I mean, you gotta be pretty freaking ruthless to kill a kid. For the first time, our hero Goku wasn't fighting for experience or for fun, he was fighting for revenge. And we've gotta say, when King Piccolo met his demise, it tasted oh so sweet. It's number one. What does it take to be the number one ruthless king? A large kingdom? Fearsome powers? A uh, thirst for conquest? Pretty much, yes. All of them. In the DC universe, one evil ruler absolutely fits the bill. Say hello to Darkseid. Darkseid's dominion is intergalactic in scale. He wants to eliminate free will itself, and he tangles with Superman on the regular. And like Nazi Germany, his fascist war machine of indoctrinated citizens are loyal to this insane megalomaniac. Darkseid also wields the Omega Force, which grants him abilities like his famous Omega Beams. These eye lasers erase targets from existence itself and are completely unavoidable. Yeah, well, theoretically unavoidable, unless you're Batman. He can affect the orbit of planets, absorb the thoughts of an entire population in an instant, and survive a bomb that rips apart existence. In comics and beyond, there has never been a more ruthless king than the nigh unstoppable dark side. Game of Thrones fans, you all know who our secret number 11 is. The young King Joffrey's reign could have been the worst in the history of Westeros. His cruelty knew no bounds, but thankfully a little sip of some poison put an early end to that one. Now, I know you've had a rough go of it, Westeros, but it probably would have been even worse under Joffrey. 